Is it worth it to try and become a physician assistant in 2021? In this video, we're going to go over some of the advantages and disadvantages to choosing this particular healthcare occupation. And there are a number of healthcare occupations to choose from. Becoming a physician assistant is extremely popular, but there's also other choices such as physical therapy, becoming a nurse or a respiratory therapist. And as of right now, all of these healthcare occupations are hot fields. When you look at the government's projection of many of these different fields, they are projected to grow by leaps and bounds with nurse practitioners growing by almost 52% over the next 10 years. Physician assistants, 31% and speech language pathologists pathologists 29 percent and keep in mind the average occupation is only growing at about four percent so all of these healthcare fields are extremely hot but what is a physician assistant and what do they do physician assistants also known as pas practice medicine on teams with physicians surgeons and other healthcare workers they examine diagnose and treat patients and just like physicians and nurse practitioners they can work in a number of different specialties some of the popular ones include dermatology emergency medicine family medicine pediatrics primary care and surgical specialties and unlike physicians who have to choose a specialty and stick with it physician assistants have the ability to move around different specialties relatively easily so if you get sick of working in pediatrics you could potentially move into dermatology just like nurse practitioners, physician assistants have the ability to prescribe medications. Often they are making diagnoses, interpreting test results, and prescribing therapy or medication with physician approval. To become a physician assistant, it is not that easy. There are six general steps. After graduating from high school, you would get a bachelor's degree with a focus in science. Many of the different physician assistance programs I looked at required two to four years working in a healthcare occupation before attending and applying to a physician assistant program. After getting into an accredited physician assistant program, it can take two to three years to graduate. After graduation, you have to pass the physician assistant national certifying exam and then obtain a state license where you want to work. Getting into an accredited physician assistant program isn't easy. On average, people that have gotten in have an average GPA of 3.5, and they have GRE scores 153 for verbal, 153 for quantitative, and a 4.1 for analytical. As for the cost of physician assistant programs over time, in 2013, average total tuition was around 38,000, and by 2019, it was around 53,000 for in-state tuition. Meanwhile, out-of-state and private programs were about double what in-state were. So the average physician assistant program is between two and three years and will cost you around 53,000 in total tuition costs. And this isn't bad given the wages of physician assistants. Compared to other occupations, physician assistants have a pretty high base wage. In the year 2020, the average base salary for a physician assistant in the United States was $116,080. This was more than nurse midwives, nurse practitioners, physical therapists, occupational therapists, and speech language pathologists. Although this was significantly less than the average base salary of a nurse anesthetist, they clock in almost 190,000 per year on average. And physician assistant salaries have been growing over time. In the year 2000, the average base salary for a physician assistant was $60,680. By 2020, this rose to $116,080, giving us a two decade average wage growth of around $2,600 per year. And just in the past five years, it's actually gone up to around $2,800 per year. This is really great wage growth, especially compared to so many other occupations, include engineering and the trades. And these are average national base salaries. They're different on the state level and even more, they're different on the metro area level. According to the government in 2020, the highest paying state for physician assistants was the last frontier state, the state of Alaska, where the average base salary is around $150,000 per year. This is followed by Connecticut, Rhode Island, and California. So up to this point, we've been talking about base salary. There's usually three different forms of compensation for physician assistants. It's basically base pay plus bonus plus benefits. Unlike say registered nurses, registered nurses can get to overtime in the form of time and a half or double time. And there's actually some pretty crazy stories of registered nurses in say San Francisco or Silicon Valley earning over $300,000 per year, basically because of overtime laws, not only in the United States, but specifically in California. So that covers the compensation of physician assistants. What is the job market like? Is it really challenging to get a job? Is it getting oversaturated? That's what we're gonna look for in this particular section. The first thing to understand is the physician assistant workforce is actually pretty small compared to say the registered nurse workforce. 
there was around 125,000 employed physician assistants in the year 2020. You can compare that to almost 3 million employed registered nurses in 2020. A workforce of 125,000 is still pretty big. It, there's definitely going to be jobs in pretty much every city, state, and metro area for physician assistants, but it's not on the same scale as, say, becoming a registered nurse. And the number of employed physician assistants has grown dramatically over the past two decades. In the year 2000, there was around 55,000 employed physician assistants. By 2020, there was recorded around 125,000. So the workforce has more than doubled in two decades. This actually kind of coincides with the number of physician assistant programs over time. All through the 80s, there was actually only 50 different physician assistant programs churning out physician assistants. By the year 2020, we're approaching about 250 physician assistant programs all around the United States. And here's where things get a little concerning for me. My fear would be if the number of physician assistant programs continues to rise over time and physician assistant programs churn out more and more physician assistants, what if there isn't enough jobs? What if there's a greater number of physician assistant graduates than number of job postings. This particular chart is from the Physician Assistant Education Association. They keep an eye on this particular workforce. In the 80s, there was around 1,000 physician assistant graduates every single year. We're approaching around 10,000 physician assistant graduates every single year. So keep that particular number in mind, between 10 and 11,000 physician assistant graduates every single year. Now we can actually get a real-time estimate of the demand for physician assistants. We can look at three different job boards, Indeed, Glassdoor, and LinkedIn.com. When I did a search for physician assistant in the United States on these three different job boards, this is what I found. I found 6,253 job opportunities on Glassdoor.com, 16,186 on Indeed.com, and 71,005 on LinkedIn. So when you compare the number of job postings against the number of employed, the workforce of physician assistants, it looks great, especially when you factor in the 71,000 job opportunities on LinkedIn.com. So at this particular point, it seems that the number of physician assistant graduates isn't exceeding the number of job postings yet, but if they keep creating more and more physician assistant programs, it's gonna look like pharmacy. This is exactly what happened to pharmacists. Uh, there was way more pharmacy schools churning out graduates and not enough demand in the labor force. So that covers the labor market for physician assistants. Finally, we can look at, would this particular occupation fit your personality? A lot of people like to take a Myers-Briggs personality test to figure out their preferences and then compare their type and their preferences to people in different occupations. According to the Myers-Briggs company, the most commonly found type in this particular occupation is the ISFJ, also known as the protector. This is followed by the caregiver, the ESFJ, and then the ISTJ, the inspector. So those are some pros and cons of choosing to become a physician assistant in 2021. Physician assistants make a great wage and they're seeing fantastic wage growth. The job market looks pretty healthy and it doesn't require too much money to become a physician assistant when compared to other occupations. If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out some of my other healthcare related videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.